All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 24. And in this lesson, students are going to be decomposing and composing fractions greater than one to express them in various forms. Basically, parents and teachers, this is a, a new way of saying, we're gonna take fractions that used to be called improper fractions. Now we just say fractions that are greater than one and we turn them into mixed numbers, which is a number that has like a, a whole number and a fraction. For example, we would say uh, eight thirds is an improper fraction, but now we just say eight thirds is a fraction greater than one, and we convert that into two and two thirds. And this lesson really gets students towards that standard algorithm. So let's get started on that. So we're supposed to rename each uh, fraction, which happens to be greater than 1, and we're going to turn them into mixed numbers by decomposing. Now the key in this lesson is there, or this video, this slide, is that they want us to specifically turn it into two parts. But I'm going to tell you, parents and teachers, you may want to, for example, let's start with 11 thirds, you may want to say um, not, it, it, you know, you may want to ignore that two component. And you may want to say, well, 11 thirds. Well, that's 3 thirds plus 3 thirds plus 3 thirds. So, so far that's 9 thirds. We can't do another set of 3 thirds, so that's plus 2 thirds more. And then you can say, but they only want us to have two parts, so you can combine these sets of three-thirds into the nine-thirds they have here plus the two-thirds. That doesn't look like a two. Now it is. Uh, two-thirds. So you may want to ignore temporarily that two parts um, piece of the notes of the directions before you get to the actual final answer. For example, thirteen-thirds. We might say, well, that's four, I mean, thirteen-fourths. That's four-fourths plus four-fourths plus four-fourths, so so far that's 12-fourths, plus we have one-fourth left over. So now we can do what the directions officially asked us to do, which is say, well, that's really 12-fourths plus one-fourth, because I took all of these and combined it into the thing that they were asking for. And we know that that is three holes and one-fourth. Now, it says to model this with a number line, so we would show, okay, I'm going to get a big old number line here, and we're going to, here's zero. We're going to say, okay, one, two, three, four is one hole. Five, six, seven, eight is another hole. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve is another hole. And then if I wanted to, I could do uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 is another hole, so that's four holes, but we went 12 holes, that puts us at 3, plus one more hole, so that's 12 fourths, I don't know if I said 12 holes earlier, so that's 12 fourths puts us here at 3, plus we have one more fourth because we needed 13 fourths all together, and there you go. So our answer is 3 and 1 fourth. Just more practice with 17 thirds. So the idea would be, let's see if we could be a little bit closer to the directions that Eureka gave us. They said, well, we want to break it up into two parts. Well, 17 thirds. So if I want to skip count by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Oop, 18 is too high. So the best we could do is we could go 15 thirds because we don't want to go beyond that 17, right? So we have 15 thirds plus we have two thirds left over. So that gives us five and two thirds. If we wanted to model that with a number line, we'd start at zero and we'd say one, two, three thirds is one. One, two, three thirds is two. So that's actually up to six thirds. Seven, eight, nine thirds is three. 10, 11, 12 thirds is four. 13, 14, 15 thirds is five. Oh no, Fif so that's 15 thirds. 16 thirds, 17 thirds. Oh my goodness. So here's our 17 thirds. 
and 17 thirds, we can clearly see that's 15 thirds. That puts us at 5 plus these extra 2 thirds. So that's how we know that the answer is 5 holes and 2 thirds. Hey, parents and teachers, you can kind of see. Hey, if students can't quite go to this step right away, let them go to the number line first. Let your students go to the number line and constantly use that number line until they're ready to move to a more abstract method. Another idea, you could take that 17 thirds and you could just say, okay, 3 thirds, that's 1. Another 3 thirds, that's 6. Uh, so that makes 2 holes, but that's 6 thirds. Another 3 thirds is 9 thirds. Another 3 thirds is 12 thirds. Another 3 thirds is 15 thirds, plus we have 2 thirds left over. So all of this right here, that's our 5, plus the 2 thirds remaining. There's a variety of ways that we can um, have our students develop an understanding rather than just have them blindly follow some algorithm for turning an improper fraction into a mixed number. So try, parents and teachers, try and resist the urge to just teach you a shortcut. Let's just teach the kids a shortcut and uh, give your students an opportunity to develop an understanding for what's going on. So here it's just kind of more of the same, but they're asking us to record our thinking in a slightly different way. So the idea is right here for 13 thirds, so this is slightly more closer towards that standard algorithm, we know that we could do six copies of two halves because six copies of two halves gives us 12 halves. So I'm going to kind of, here's my little thought bubble, and that gives us 12 halves. So six copies of two halves gives us 12 halves, plus we have one half to go, one half more, because we needed 13 halves altogether. Well, if you have six copies of two halves, that's equal to six. And then you have, so that whole thing right here is equal to six, and then we have this half left over, so our answer is six and a half. And if you wanted to draw that, We'd start here at zero, one half, two halves, that's equal to one, three halves, four halves, that's equal to two, five halves, six halves, that's equal to three, seven halves, eight halves, that's equal to four, nine halves, ten halves, that's equal to five, eleven halves, twelve halves, that's equal to six, and then one more half gives us 13 halves. So we can see from here to here, that's our 6, right? Now, if we wanted to, we could say this. We could say from here to here, that's 1. 2 halves is 1. From here to here is 2 halves. That's another 1. From here to here is 2 halves. That's another 1. From here to here is two halves. That's another one. From here to here is two halves. That's another one. From here to here is two halves. That's another one. So how many two halves do we have? Well, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six two halves. Plus we have one little half left over. So that's how we get another way of showing six and a half. Now, parents and teachers, this portion is really just nine examples, nine opportunities for students to practice converting each fraction into a mixed number using any combination of number lines, tape diagrams, um, some informal algorithm, or the standard algorithm. Uh, for your high flyers, this might be an opportunity for students to really start thinking about um, their high flyers, uh, their standard algorithm. For example, A. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. 14 thirds. Well, 14 thirds. Let's see. So 14 thirds. Let's skip count by threes. And the closest we can get is 4 times 3, which is 12. So that's going to be 4 times 3 thirds is 12, plus we have 2 thirds left over. So this is equal to four holes and two-thirds left over.
That's one way to show it. Another way to show it is using a number line. You could have said, okay, well, let's just do a number line and said, okay, we're going to start at zero. One, two, three thirds is one. Four, five, six thirds is two. Seven, eight, nine thirds is three. Ten, eleven, twelve thirds is four. Thirteen, fourteen. So there's our fourteen thirds. And when you have three of them, three thirds equals one whole, another three thirds equals another whole, another three thirds, another three third thirds, and then we only have two thirds left over. So you can see here is our four, here is our two thirds. So there's a variety of ways our students can be thinking about how to turn an improper fraction into a mixed number. And again, we don't really call it an improper fraction anymore. We call it just, it's a fraction. Improper makes it sound like there's something wrong with it, and that's just not true. So if we wanted to, uh, we could do another problem. And man, I wish I could do audience participation. Hey, class, what problem do you want to do now? Um, we might do F. So F, 37 eighths. Hmm, I'm going to think about my eighths. Uh, 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. So 8 times 4 is as close as I can get. So I'm going to do 4 times 8 is 32. And then we have 5 eighths left over. So 4 times 8 is 32, plus 5 is 37. Uh, so 4 times 8 eighths. This thing right here is equivalent to 4 wholes, because this is essentially saying you have 4 copies of 8, of eight eighths. So you have 4 copies of 1 whole. So that's 4 plus the extra 5 eighths. And there we go. And that wraps up this lesson. Very ends up nice and traditional. Fourth grade, module five, lesson 24. It's going to make the parents and teachers, us old fogies, a little happy because basically we are turning improper fractions, which now we're just calling fractions, and turning them into mixed numbers, which are still called mixed numbers, such as 13 fourths is equal to three and one fourth.